It's me, Olli, here again. As you might have guessed from the intro, I've been quite active lately, scouting all kind of interesting location to 3D scan using my new magic wand setup. I've been testing my 360 cameras and scanning various outdoor spaces and larger environments, but I also had the chance to try the scanner indoors and explore how well it works when capturing an entire room. In this video I want to show you how my custom-built scanner works in practice and which camera settings gives the best result. I'll also walk you through what happens to the scan data after it's captured and share a few key things to keep in mind when processing 360 images for Gaussian splatting training. But first, before we start scanning, we might need to look at the camera settings. If you have followed my previous videos, you may already know that I've built this scanner to utilize three Insta360 X5 cameras. So the settings are exactly the same on all of them. Or at least if you remember to update them to the same firmware version. Anyway, I have settled on a basic setting that I think works best in many situations. And that's a simple video recording mode. It's good to utilize all the available resolution. So when shooting video, I use the 8K setting at the 30 frames per second. With the newest firmware update, there's now an adaptive tone setting that automatically optimizes brightness and colors, making the image higher quality, so I've been using it. Of course, these cameras also offer many other capturing options, where we could utilize much higher resolution. For example, interval shooting, which produce individual images at up to 72 megapixel resolution. But the problem with this is that it takes at least three seconds to process each frames. So scanning with it would have to be done very slowly and very steadily. Another option is to scan in time-lapse mode, which like in previous method takes individual images, but at a minimum interval of two seconds. The camera eventually combines time-lapse image sequences automatically into a video file, and it is able to do it in a slightly higher resolution of 11K. However, these shooting modes are quite challenging to handle, and they introduce a few additional steps to the post-processing, so I won't go into them further in this video. One other point concerns the Insta360 phone app itself. Should it be used during the scanning? With this particular three camera setup, it's not really useful, as it can only connect to one camera at a time. And it messes up the voice control a bit, as the camera connected to the app no longer obeys voice commands. And you have to manually start the camera from the app. But if we think about how we could utilize geolocation data, and how GPS coordinates can be stored in the metadata of the video files, then the use of the app is justified and probably necessary. But I haven't delved into this feature yet, so this topic will also have to be covered in more detail in later videos. Instead, I want to present the process of what needs to be done to the scanned material after the scanning. 
So, first we need to unload and import the raw video files from all these cameras to the Insta360 Studio desktop program. In there we lightly edit them and save them out as a full 360 equi rectangular format. I usually name these files as high, mid and low MP4 files considering which camera the original footage was saved. Then I change the program to Blender software where I open my own 360 image extractor add-on and where I can now import all these converted footages. This plugin is still in development by the time of making this video, but I will tell you and introduce its principles now. First, we can process a video file that was shot from the highest 360 camera. The intention is to create a camera group with eight cameras, all pointing in the so-called compass directions. And since we are at a high angle, it is a good idea to point these cameras at about 30 degrees downwards. Blender add-on has a handy slider for this that rotates all the cameras at the same time. And now, by activating the cameras from this group, we can go through and see what kind of a views each camera sees. Since I can see myself as a camera operator here, and I will inevitably be visible from at least three of these angles, I can do a little trick by making a new group setting and tilt up these specific cameras so that I am no longer visible in the images. This way we will get a full 360 angle coverage from this highest point. But the same trick won't work for the middle video, since my body will cover those three back pointing angles and tilting those views won't make that much sense. So we simply have to remove these directions from the group and that's okay, we still have five angles from the middle, which is plenty enough. The same principle goes to the lowest video. Here these back pointing directions are staring at my feet, so these angles need to be removed also. But from the lowest angle the most practical thing is to look slightly upwards, so we follow the same 30 degree rule and tilt the views up from here. And now, in this way, we have built a setup that will cover all the necessary and most usable viewing angles from those 360 videos. All we need to do is render these images out from Blender. And of course, since we don't need that many images from all the video frames, we need to set the step value so that this 18 angles image setup is rendered only from every second or two from the original 360 videos. This means that eventually we will have a lot of image data from those three cameras. So where do we go from here with these extracted images then? I see two options. Since our goal is to produce a Gaussian splatting model of these, we can either drag the whole image set to the PostShot program directly, or we can import them to Reality Capture software, or should we call it Reality Scan, as the newest version of it is named nowadays, and try to speed up the process a bit by building the image aligning phase and generating the so-called structure for motion over there. But even though Reality Scan has improved quite a lot in latest version and is able to handle large datasets with large number of images, I have noticed that it is still not very good with these so-called pinhole camera images. Because these images are extracted from 360 video footage, and do not themselves hold important metadata information about lenses and focal points, Reality Scan struggles and end up generating multiple components, which you then have to manually try to merge together 
and try to solve the position of the images and the cameras by hand. This naturally takes time and even if you eventually succeed in solving a large part of the point cloud structure, many images are always left out in the process. That's why I've now preferred the let the post shot handle the entire process and to my surprise I have noticed that it actually does better job of aligning the images. So even though these datasets take a really long time to process in PostShot, for example, this scan which I made from this outdoor theater consists a total of 3420 images, took a massive 22 hours to process on my average PC. I thought the end result was very nice and the number of solved images was incredibly accurate. Beauchard's own SFM calculation eventually managed to solve almost all of the images extracted from the scan. If I have tried to achieve the same result with the reality scan, it would have taken me the same amount of laborious manual time or more. And I think I would have missed out several images anyway. But then again, sometimes there can be exceptions to this. For example, this indoor scan, where I was able to scan this small studio space. Reality scan showed it relatively quickly and managed to align almost all 1080 images without any problems. Meanwhile, PostShot took a very long time to calculate camera angles from the same material. Therefore, I can't rule out that Reality Scan wouldn't work with this scanner. It seems more like if it is an outdoor scan like this, then it is worth taking the time and letting the PostShot handle the entire project. Reality Scan seems to work better with scanned material that are done indoors and consist more these geometrical shapes. In any case, no matter which method is used to process the scanned data, the most important thing is that the end result is high quality Gaussian model. And this process shows that this magic wand really works and scanned environment captured with 360 cameras from three different heights can indeed be converted into a format that produce valid 3D data and stunning radiance fields. Or what do you think? I have uploaded these Gaussian splatting models to the Play Canvas Super Splat Gallery, so you can check them out for yourself and see how they run on your device. You can find these links in the description. I hope this video was inspiring and useful. At least I found a lot of new topics for my next videos. Next I will focus on finishing coding and fine-tuning my Blender plugin so that I can get it out soon. This 360 scanning is fun and I believe that with these tools anyone with a camera like this can scan and create amazing 3D environments. So let's continue from here. Until the next time, thanks for watching.